El Nino is a periodic uh, weather pattern. It's cyclical, comes every few years, and it involves norm, uh, higher than average temperatures in, in parts of the ocean, and this ends up affecting rainfall and the timing of rainfall and climate uh, around the world, especially in areas bordering the major oceans. What is important is that the, the current Nino, about which this brief is talking about, uh, is now close to be the second uh, worst Nino in the history since 1950s. Uh, the biggest Nino, uh, or, the, or the toughest Nino, was in 1997. Uh, we are now very close to it, and that's why the topics mentioned in this brief are so relevant and important. El Nino can affect food security negatively, uh, basically by changing weather patterns and rainfall, either uh, leading to droughts or in some cases excessive rainfall. It has been affecting currently Africa, especially uh, Eastern Africa. It has also affected parts of South Africa, has also affected South America and Central America and Asia. There's a big concern right now uh, in Africa, both in Eastern Africa, in the Horn area, Ethiopia, as well as in Southern Africa, uh, where uh, rainfall has been lower than normal in, in certain parts, and this is threatening uh, crop production and, and livelihoods. Specifically in the case of Central America, which is the most affected region because it's one of the poorest parts of Latin America, uh, the major effects has been in Honduras, uh, Guatemala, and El Salvador. Specifically in the case of Honduras, uh, it had basically affected severely the dry corridor area, which have resulted in a significant reduction of the food supplies or availability of food uh, in, those, in those regions. The brief details several policy measures that we can take uh, to be able to increase resilience to a problem like, like El Nino. The important thing to understand is that El Nino is not something that happens now. It's something that has been happening in the past. Therefore, countries can get prepared to try to resolve that type of problem. The most important measure in the short run is to provide safety nets for farmers and net purchasers of grain and provide them with either the grain itself or the assets, the cash, to acquire uh, the food that they need. And one of the core policy recommendations is something that we have learned from Mexico and also from Peru, which is basically the creation of contingent funds uh, for this type of, of climate shocks. Why? Because we know they will happen. Uh, and the idea is for governments to be able to have sufficient resources to respond to these emergencies. The second element tied to this contingent funding is also to use catastrophic insurance. These are mechanisms, given that we know that this type of phenomena will happen, that will allow governments to have an insurance in place and therefore when it happens, it can go to the insurance and to the reinsurance companies to be able to cope with this mechanism and not affect, therefore, their fiscal uh, uh, budgets, which is extremely tight in many of these countries. It's important also then to invest in agriculture and in, in, in ways that are resilient to this kind of drought or shock.